Today I'm going to do an in-depth breakdown of the Warbound reveal, and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here, welcome to Guardian Watcher. If it's your first time here and you enjoy learning all things about Destiny, then hit the subscribe button and click on the bell, that way you guys don't miss out on any future videos. Warning! There are Warmind spoilers ahead, so if you don't want to know any spoilers, then move on to the next video right now. I don't want to count down again, so that was your warning. And if you're still here, then welcome! So, as many of you know, yesterday, Bungie premiered their Warmind reveal. This video is going to break everything down and save you the pain of watching an hour long stream, but in return, you get to suffer the screeching pain of hearing my sexy voice instead. Now, it took me a long time to do this video because I wanted to make sure I got as much information from the reveal after watching it several times. And that is because a lot of YouTubers missed a lot of information in their own videos. But in the event if I missed something that you noticed, please let us know in the comments below. All of the information that you are about to receive came from a single hot pink sticky note that was on the base of Bungie's building, so enjoy. On a real note, my source was the stream itself, and if you guys would like to check that out, then it will be in the description below. Now, Bungie had team up with Vicarious Visions, which is another game developer company, to bring us the Warmind expansion. They have been working with each other for about two years now. In the Warmind expansion, we will be getting a new destination to explore, things to find in that destination, a new campaign, new adventures, new public events, new patrols, new endgame activities, a new raid lair, PvP ranking, private matches, and new PvP maps. As we all may know, we are going back to Mars for the Warmind expansion, and specifically Hellas Basin, which is a polar ice cap of Mars. The Warmind that is located on Mars is indeed Rasputin, and he has been awakened and set off a chain of events throughout the solar system. Because of these events, it's caused the polar ice cap to actually melt. These ice caps are uncovering a time capsule that was left on Mars called the Spray, which is the cradle of invention. This is the birthplace of all technology in the Destiny universe. This is also the birthplace of Rasputin himself. Now, Bungie didn't say how Rasputin is on Mars and on Old Russia, which is on Earth, at the same time, but they are going to leave that mystery for us to find out come May 8th. As we know, the Hive will be our main enemies on Mars, but we will still see the Cabal in some areas. There are Hive and Hive ships frozen underneath the surface of the ice caps. There will be many seers and lore hidden away across the destination, so check out behind rocks, crevices, under bridges, etc. The Bray facility will play an important role in the Warmind DLC. It is owned by the Clorvis Bray Company. Anna Anastasia Bray is a new hero, a hunter, with cybernetic modifications to her eyes, and she is going to be the cornerstone of the Warmind. She is the new NPC that will be our guide throughout the Warmind DLC. Not only will she be the main storyteller through the campaign, but she will also be a vendor. Through Anna Bray, we will be able to find out the relationship between Clovis Bray, Rasputin, and herself. Now this is pure speculation, but I guess that the Clovis Bray company made Rasputin, Rasputin went Psycho AI, and Anna Bray is there to help stop it. Still speculation, even though we don't see it, there is a huge monster that is locked away underneath the ice caps in the capsule and it was released when the ice cap started to melt. Escalation Protocol is a new ritualized survival mode public event that is exclusive to the Warmind DLC. In this survival mode, we will be getting seven waves of enemy. However, unlike other public events that have a timer until it comes, this public event can be activated when you want to. In order to start the Escalation Protocol, we will have to interact with a square machine on the ground. When you do this, Rasputin will draw waves of hive to your location in order for us to take them out, destroy their life force, unalive them, KILL THEM! <laughs> I'm sorry. At the end of each wave, we'll have a mini boss to beat, but at the end of the seventh wave, we'll meet a final boss with a unique mechanic to defeat, which is similar to how the Prison of Elders in the original Destiny worked. There will be five different final bosses that, just like the Prison of Elders, will rotate each week. Each of the final bosses will have their own unique rewards that the other bosses don't have. Bungie said that there are three legendary weapons with unique perks inside Escalation Protocol, but I think that there are four. We also can get a full armor set for each class when doing the Escalation Protocol, 
that we can only obtain from the Escalation Protocol that aren't anywhere else in the game. One of the unique weapons in the Escalation Protocol is a shotgun called Ikelos SHV-101, which, after a successful melee hit, this weapon gains damage, accuracy, and handling with stricter damage falloff for a short time. Another weapon is a sniper rifle, and it has a perk called Box Breathing, which while ADSing for a period of time before firing a shot, will give you an increased damage boost for your critical hits. And this sniper rifle also has triple tap. And Bungie didn't mention what the last weapon was, but we ended up getting a quick glance of it, and it was called Ikelos HCV-101, which is a hand cannon that has the Rampage perk on it. But one of the guys in the PvE area actually switched to a submachine gun that also had a Warmind theme, which leads me to believe that there are four weapons and not just three. To me, the sniper rifle seems like it's going to be a beast in PvE as well as PvP. Now, during Escalation Protocol, there will be a few different reward systems that will be working at the same time. With the end of waves of 3 and 5, we will get an encrypted cash key to be able to unlock chests with public event rewards as well as vanity items. However, the most desirable items are at the end after beating the final boss, and this features two different systems. Shadow Rifts will spawn, and then we will have to destroy them, or the Hive will not be attracted to the towers, and the time will expire. During this time, Hive Knights need to be killed, and then we can take their swords and use them to kill enemies. Like in the original Destiny, the Hive Sword will work the same way. The planet will feature Mars tokens, but this event will also feature Armory Codes, and you can get Armory Codes from around the game as well. These armory codes you can use to spend on special weapons like the Valkyrie, which is a quote, magical spear rocket launcher, end quote. The Valkyrie can be used as a melee or ranged weapon for a short amount of time, so use it wisely. There will be new planetary challenges such as anti-magic, where you have to slay hive wizards. And then we have subroutine Valkyrie, which we have to destroy enemies with the Valkyrie. And then we have intrepid explorer, where we have to loot a Lost Sector in Hella's Basin. So, that just says there are new Lost Sectors in the new destination as well. But in order to unlock Escalation Protocol on your character, you will need to complete the campaign, but you can join other players who have already unlocked it. The only disadvantage of that is, you will be at an extremely lower level. Besides Escalation Protocol, we will be getting regular public events as well, that are on a timer like on every other planet. One of the new public events is actually called Witch's Ritual. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see the details on this public event. On the destination, we will see high value targets that will roam on the surface of the planet, even outside public events. Next, let's talk about the weapons. We will be getting new legendary weapons like the Bray Tech Winter Wolf, which is an auto rifle that has glass half full as a perk. 18 Calvins is a new sidearm that has the kill clip perk on it, and there are many more. Next, let's actually go over the emote wheel. Now, there are four different slots, one for each of the slots on your d-pad, and then we can hold one full page of emotes. A full page equivalates to 40 different emotes. We will be getting new emotes, ships, speeders, as well as emblems in the Warmind DLC. Crucible rankings and private matches are also coming to Destiny 2 with the Warmind DLC, but are available to all Guardians even if you don't have the Warmind expansion. Now let's start with the Crucible ranks. There are two ranks. The Valor Rank and the Glory Rank. The Valor Rank goes up when you complete matches and Willing helps you move up faster. And this has no loss penalties. And then there is the Glory Rank, which goes up when you win, but goes down when you lose. The Glory Rank is specifically for the competitive playlist and leaving early in a competitive match gives you a loss. Both ranks offer streak bonuses, but in the Glory Rank, if you are losing consecutively, it'll hurt you more than it'll help. Starting with Season 3, the Crucible Rewards systems are getting a change. As soon as we log in, we will have to go to Lord Shacks and receive a package that contains two emblems, one for Valor and one for Glory. We will also be presented with all of the Crucible Inventory Rewards and how to actually get them. Now, there are many ways to get Crucible Rewards, so be sure to read how we actually go about getting them in the game. If you max out your Valor rank and decide that you want to reset it, we will get rewards after we reset it, 
and this will work similar to the COD Prestige system where it'll track that you got to the highest level and then start it over. The Valor Emblem tracks the number of Valor ranks completed in Season 3 and the Glory Emblem tracks Glory rank points in Season 3 but in real time. There will be a specific gun in PvP each season that is the one to chase. For Season 3, it will be Redrick's Claymore which is a legendary pulse rifle and has a perk called Desperado that reads, Reloading while Outlaw is active increases your rate of fire. Now, this also does have Outlaw, but the special thing about Desperado is that when your rate of fire increases, your impact does not change. As I said, this weapon also has Outlaw, but Outlaw will be getting a buff in update 1.2.0 so that it refreshes every headshot kill with no cooldown. According to Bungie, this weapon will be attached to the Fabled rank in Glory, which is one of the top tier ranks among the Glory rank. In private matches, Bungie took away the time of day so that they can focus more on the game modes itself. The options for private matches are game type, map, match time limit, match score limit, and respawn time. We will be getting two new maps to the Crucible for the Warmind DLC, which are called Meltdown and Solitude. Now, you must have the Warmind DLC in order to play Solitude, but not Meltdown. Finally, we are going to talk about exotics. Exotic weapons like the Tractor Cannon and Graviton Lance will be getting updates as well as many new and older exotics will make it into the game. However, not every exotic weapon will be getting an update. Only the very specific ones that really needed an update were the ones that got looked at. As we know, the service regime is coming back in Destiny 2. The Fighting Lion has more ammo with a small adjustment on how damage works on it. More damage was added to the detonation blast, but less damage to the impact. And if you get a kill with the Fighting Lion, we are guaranteed an energy ammo brick to drop. As for the Risk Runner, and this may be confusing for some, we will be getting an increase in arc damage resistance when the weapon activates, and this will be enabled for PvP but you only get the damage resistance when the weapon is in hand. Risk Runner's Arc Overdrive perk will also enable when it is stowed while using another weapon. Skyburner's Oath will also be getting an update, and it'll work the same way it used to prior to Season 3, but with a few tweaks. Skyburner's Oath now has explosive rounds, and shooting it from the hip will slow the rate of fire, but it'll feel like you're rapidly lobbing rounds like a grenade launcher. Oh, and it has tracking too but only when you fire it from the hip. Hard Light now changes elements like the Borealis does, and every time a bullet ricochets, it gets double damage. This means that if you're a very accurate person, then you can shoot the ground in front of the enemy and just melt them instantly. As for the Graviton Lance, it will be changed into a two round burst instead of its prior three round burst. The first bullet will be a little bit weaker, and the second bullet will be much stronger with a harder kick. Now, combine the Pulse Rifle updates from Update 1.1.4 with the Exotic update in Update 1.2.0 and the Graviton Lance will be a force to reckon with. Crimson will now have a lot more ammo and it has increased damage, a slower burst, but Bungie sped up the time between bursts in order to be able to match the cadence of aggressive hand cannons and then in order to match the time to kill with aggressive hand cannons, Bungie changed the first bullet of the final burst to be the killing blow. So given that Crimson has three three round bursts, on that third burst, that first round will be the killing blow. I hope that makes sense. Now, since the Sturm and Drang are paired weapons, getting a kill with the Drang will make the Sturm a two shot kill if you don't miss your shots. Also, getting a kill with the Drang automatically reloads Sturm and it adds one bonus round to the magazine. Since Sturm has a default of 12 rounds in a magazine and can go up to 20 with the bonus rounds, rounds from 13 to 20 have a significant amount of bonus damage. And this is actually a correction that I made after watching the reveal. And because of this, I can see this getting heavily abused in PvP. And that was the entire reveal in a matter of minutes. As I said earlier, if I missed anything then please let everyone know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then feel free to watch these other videos as well. You never know, you just might like them. And if you do, leave a like, share them, and then come back for more, because you know you want to. 
Thank you guys for watching, and remember, less guns doesn't mean less crime. And I will see you guys next time.